Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use colored leads, specifically the color Eno family of color leads. They are eight colors available. We're going to be using pink today. Colored leads and Kurataki Clean Color Real Brushes on watercolor paper to make a cute illustration. So since I have a hard time drawing and talking, I went ahead and I did the framework for the illustration that I want to make and I'm going to just work on tightening it up. I'm using that color Eno blue lead and what I really like about this lead is that it is very erasable. So if I make a mistake rather than like with coal erase which while it is designed to be erased I find coal erase ghosts a lot. Um, I can get a pretty clean eraser on uh, using the color Eno blue lead. So I'm actually going to draw in silence because it is in, it's getting increasingly difficult for me to talk and draw well and I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. So I've got it all sketched out now. We've got this cute little Oni kid hugging a cuter little Oni stuffed bear. And anytime you're going to use a color medium, I highly recommend you go ahead and swatch the colors you think you're going to want to use just to make sure that they are the colors they appear to be. Because we can't really trust these cute and colorful caps. So I want a peachy color. That'll work. I'm going to need a darker peachy color to shade with. And I usually line my markers up in order of when I think I'm going to use them. So we're gonna start with Actually, we're gonna start with the whites of the eyes. So we're gonna use this really, really light color. If you're following along at home, it's haze blue. And I'm not going to bother to ink this. I'm not going to bother to remove the line art in any form. And you guys will hopefully see why. I'm just going to color directly on top. And the water in these water-based markers, because that's what these are, dissolves the lead just a little bit so you get some nice color blends that way. Then I'm going to start on the skin and since I have a limited range and I'm working with an unusual medium, um, I'm going to focus more on coloring in the shadows. So we're going to color above the eyes under the bangs because the bangs would cast a shadow. Define the shape of the face. And while you can use water or um, a blender marker even to sort of blend out your colors if you want, I feel like that kind of ruins the effect. So I just don't. Find the face this way as well. Then while this is still damp, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a little bit of a darker pink color. 
and I'm going to blend that out using this peach. You don't want to blend out too, too much and you want to use on a, work on an absorbent paper. So a watercolor paper like what we're using here is often a good choice. You can also build up a couple of layers of shadow if you need them. You really want to get the most out of each marker before you move on to the next. It just helps ensure nicer color blends. And it helps you keep your color library down. I have a huge Copic and alcohol marker collection, but my water-based marker collection is actually much smaller because there are watercolor tricks that I can use to sort of stretch my library. And at the time I was investing in most of my alcohol markers, I probably could have used those tricks as well, but I wasn't aware of them because I hadn't started doing watercolors. So I wasn't as aware of getting the most out of every single color. I'm a little bit more so now, so I tend to work with a smaller range than some artists do. Also want to add a little bit of definition to her nose, or to their nose. And we're gonna go ahead and start in on the ears. And you guys noticed I really only used two colors plus the pink of the color Eno. So, you know, you, you can also use multiple color Enos if you want to sort of uh, influence the colors that you're going to be using. I really like this technique. I think you can get some really delicate effects that I wouldn't know how to get in marker. I'm sure some of you guys would be able to do it in marker, but I could not necessarily do it in marker. And you can also use um, your color, you know, LEDs with your alcohol-based markers. And I'm going to do another tutorial video on that later on. My personal preference for most mixed media projects is actually working on watercolor papers. So I will probably be using either this or something similar. So I'm working wet into wet because that's how you're going to get blending. And we're using a watercolor paper because it will allow for blending. And I'm kind of tempted. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm kind of tempted to go in and work the face on this side just a little bit more so that there isn't such a distance. There we go. It looks a little better. It looks pretty cute, actually. And if you want to build up significant changes between layers, just let your previous layer dry all the way through. So now we have, I'm going to start on the hand. I try to break the skin into discrete trunk chunks and render that uniformly because um, you want to work wet into wet in order to get the best blending you can. It's just easier to work that way. I find that's true with alcohol markers as well. Um, you're not going to get as much color variation working wet into wet, but you will get the smoothest blends. I'm just going to add a little bit of that hot pink where their fingers meet and underneath. And then we're going to blend that out just a little bit. Another great thing about these sort of water-based markers is they are, they, these are not refillable. So that is, it, it will seem like a bit of a false economy, but if you are just starting out, these are much cheaper than most alcohol markers. Though they can be a little bit harder to find. So for some of you guys, this might be an easier thing to convince a loved one. I think the full set is like 48 colors, although I might be wrong. That's right, we're only gonna do the shadow, so I need to pull back on how much I'm rendering because we do need to rely on the white of the page as one of our colors. But 
it might be an easier sell for you to convince a parent to spring for the 48 set, which is like, um, it was around 70 some odd dollars last I checked. They might be more expensive. Of course, as these things uh, grow and wane in popularity, they tend to change price. And I think Kuratake is actually mm, combining the aspects of the, the Zig Clean Color Real Brushes with their Tombow, I mean their, I'm sorry, their Zig, uh, actually, nope, I don't have one on the table. They have this other water-based marker product, yes I do, I have it right here, Art and Graphic Twin, because this has a real brush now, and uh, I kind of, I kind of regret that because I really like the rubber brush that that had, but I might have been the only person who liked the rubber brush that that had. And the Zig markers are part of the Zig memory system, which is a color system so you can match your water-based markers from Zig, mar wash, uh, sorry, Zig brushables from Zig Art and Graph, I mean, yeah, Art and Graphic Twin and Zig Clean Color Real Brush. You can also match with calligraphy markers. So you can, um, there's a lot of ways you can sort of expand your collection easily and blend that out again. Like I said, it's sometimes it's very hard for me to uh, art and talk. I think it must use some of the same processes in my brain. And as some colors, some areas dry, I just go ahead and add another layer of color to them. Because water-based markers, like alcohol markers, you can really get some nice effects if you are willing to be patient and build up your colors. And see, I was so busy talking that I actually colored over where the bear's paw was supposed to be. my endorsement of these is not um, a paid endorsement. I don't think Kurtaki even knows I exist. So it is certainly not like that. I just really like them. And I do a lot of conventions. I do a lot of shows. So I see a lot of um, younger people who would like to start using artist grade materials or uh, they think the only way they can be a real, art real artist is if they're using Copics. And there's just so many, I mean, I like Copics a lot, but there's just so many other really nice products on the market that will give them the look they want. They just have to learn how to use them. And there aren't a lot of artists who are, seem to be willing to focus on teaching some of those alternate methods. Okay, so I'm gonna use this very sparingly because it is very desaturated compared to some of the other colors that I've used and I've found in the past that it's toned my work down much more than I wanted it to. So I'm just going to be really careful with how much of it I use. And I don't, I don't think that's out of like maliciousness. I think we all get all so caught up in like, this is what quote unquote real artists do that um, we kind of lose our ability to have our own favorites. And some people are afraid to have an opinion that differs from the status quo. I've never really cared too much because I always seem to be off on my own weird beat anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, so we have her skin colored, and I think, or it, the, the, we have the child's skin colored, and I think it looks pretty cute. So I'm going to move on now to filling in areas of white. And we're gonna go for an optical white, so we're gonna use this blue here to hit all of the low lights. 
So all the shadows or areas that wouldn't be getting direct light. And again, we can build up colors with this color. We're not um, limited to just one pass. And I know there are a lot of artists right now who are playing around with the colored LEDs in conjunction with alcohol markers. So I did want to present you guys um, an alternative method of using these LEDs. But I do hope you'll revisit this channel, if you aren't subscribed, to uh, watch the tutorial where I use these with alcohol markers for sort of a lineless look. And it's funny because I've used colored UNO LED since like 2008, 2009, and I never realized that you could use them this way. I always thought they would ruin your markers the way graphite will ruin your markers, but it's really nice that they do not. I'd felt kind of constrained um, having to do, or feeling like I had to do line art so I just found another area of skin that I'd missed. So I am going back in. And since we're working wet into wet, it will ble uh, blend on its own. And I'm going to start swatching some other colors. I think I might save this for the hair though. Oh, I like that purple, but that purple is way too light for what I want. So a long time ago, I I said something crummy about how real artists prefer a brush tip on their alcohol markers, and I've gotten a lot of flack for that, and rightfully so. I shouldn't have said it like that, um, because apparently a lot of a lot of artists do enjoy the bullet nib, which I can, I don't understand how how y'all can like it, but I will see that you do. I'm not going to argue your preferences. And that's exactly what I mean by like, I don't want people to, I don't ever want to create this illusion that there's only one way to do something correctly. Because I got a lot of ire for that. And like I said, rightfully so, I should not have said this, that. And it's, this is probably not the video to, um, <laughs> I'll issue an apology for that because I'm sure those people watched that one overview video got really upset that I negated their existence like that and uh, or denied their existence like that and never looked at anything else that I did. So I'm sure they're not seeing this but I do regret saying that because you know I don't want to perpetuate this notion that there's only one way to be an artist Though I will continue to fight that I personally think brushes are easier to use. And it's one of the selling points of these real brush markers. They are water-based the same way, say, Crayola are water-based. But the big difference, is, and they use dye-based ink, same as Crayola, though probably not quite as washable. The real difference is that um, they have a brush with individual bristles. So the thing about water-based markers is that your paper stays wet way longer than your alcohol-based markers do. So your paper is more likely to tear and shred if you're using water-based markers. And you can kind of get away, honestly, you can get away with using crummy, crummy paper if you're using alcohol markers because they dry so quickly and they'll blend on almost anything that you can get some really nice effects out of some really crummy paper, some really inexpensive paper that wouldn't really work well for any other artistic medium. 
whereas water-based markers really shine on almost the same sort of papers or the same sort of papers that watercolors work well on. I am not a big fan of using water-based markers on cotton rag paper, but part of that is like pearls before swine. Um, but I've also found that these cellulose-based watercolor papers, like what I'm using here, um, perform beautifully. And if you want to try this at home, I recommend you go pick up an inexpensive block of fluid watercolor paper, or you could even use like Canson Montval watercolor paper or Strathmore watercolor paper. You really don't have to spend a lot of money for your water-based markers. You just, you just can't be as cheap as you can get away with being with your alcohol markers. I mean, alcohol markers will work beautifully on almost anything. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, water-based markers have gotten such a poor rap and so many artists are so insistent that they are not an artist grade art supply. But I think once you are familiar with them and you know how to use them, that's not the case. So I'm actually going to grab a light minty green and I'm going to swatch it to double check that it is the color I believe it to be. And I'm just going to shade the bottoms of the stars. I'm also going to color in the horns, which I opted to handle a bit like unicorn horns or sort of like uh, ice cream cones, if you like. And I'm going to go ahead and color the bear's eyes. As well as the inside of the bear's ear. And then I'm going to scooch on over to pink. I have not really used that yet. Sort of trying to keep a unified color palette of sherberty tones. And there's a pretty big discrepancy between the pink I'm using and the white of the page. That's okay. Some people think of this as sort of like a watercolor effect, but as a watercolor artist, I do not think of it personally as a watercolor effect when you have these like large unblended areas of white. Kind of looks like a reverse panda. Sure, I'll go with that. And we can just enter into the land of regrets. And I will try to blend out a little bit, not too much, with English tea rose while this is still wet. And I actually think that works fine. All right, looking pretty cute so far. Working on building up some of those colors. Go back in with the green since it's had a chance to dry. I 
I'm filling in that area because that's going to be in shadow. I have to work a little carefully because I'm working around the spirals of this notebook. So that will affect my ability to control lines. And another complaint I really hear about uh, water-based markers is they're streaky. And uh, it's because they are harder to reactivate than alcohol markers are. Alcohol markers, you just add another layer on top and it'll sort of melt the prior layer and blend out those streaks. Water-based markers, not quite the case. So trying to avoid messing up my line work. So you just have to be sort of careful to try and work a little more uniformly than if you were using alcohol markers. So in a way, water-based markers actually require a lot more artistry. You're paying less per product, but you need more hand control and you need to be able to plan out what you're doing a little bit better, which is difficult for me when I'm chatting and arting. And then add, super tempted just to take this out. I'm so tired of dealing with the spiral. There we go. And that's a much darker purple. So we want to use it really, really sparingly. And then a little bit and I want to use a brighter yellow on the bracelet. I need coloring this little guy's nose and horn. 